it, no. it this really feels like the episode that shouldn't be it's been it yeah. felt like that lately like I, I just i don't know if there's a look i just let you guys know i'm not depressed i'm not sad and i have no uh of those thoughts because no we tried a little uh, we did the whole thing Streamyard, wonderful platform used it many times today i i send the invite to jeremy he can't hear me at all he said a, a strange robot noise was happening uh um, hmm. We're hmm. pretty anti-robot here, so it, it doesn't really that doesn't really jive here. Um, was it your gang stalker or the gang stalker lady? I, <laughs> you know, was that was she? If I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but I was gonna say uh, the other day. I'm not gonna lie. I had a dream that uh, I've been having some wild dreams lately. But like one of them, uh, not to get weird, but one of them involved a video playing that Jeremy was in on a TV. But you were at Diddy's house, dude. You were no. doing like some recon work at at uh, or some like some. You were just not like. I mean, you weren't you weren't doing the things. You were you were like trying to find out what was wrong, and I was just like. And for some reason, when I woke up, like there were other things happening in that dream. But I was like, oh damn, did that? Did he really do like a Diddy video? Like that'd be sick. And then I, it, it was it was just a, a weird dream. Uh, yeah, from the five to the six, we be in the mix with that rare candy paint job on a whip. I need food for the kids, money for the rent. Fuck a lockdown, baby, I can't do that shit And I don't ever vote, cause I'm fucking broke And either way, I know the police ain't gon' leave me alone On a plane, bout to visit Glen Rock Me crypto told me I should bring the Glock with me So I packed up my piece and I'm sliding Cause we might get caught up in a riot Middle finger Trump, middle finger Biden Fuck a left, fuck a right, is you riding? Real love to see it, dudes rocking Ain't no politics, baby, we just talking From the birds to the bricks, we be in the mix With that rare candy paint job on a whip who you with diddy diddy's back now i feel like i don't know if anybody's looking for him anymore i feel like they're just like hey disappear for a week dude like yeah. and then um yeah and then beyonce dropped the country <laughs> album for as a distraction i heard so that, yeah because yeah. jay-z's yeah. the real guy we know this right jay-z's the real guy that everybody's trying Everyone to get it i think yeah. they, they're getting to diddy to get to jay-z i think yeah i i just that's my that's my that's my thing because jay-z's had like Dude, he's had the Illuminati allegations. He's been pretty yeah. much ever since he got popular. He's yeah. been having these like Rothschild style things happen, like these really strange, like where he's involved. Especially when like Obama got elected, it definitely didn't help the allegations. And he um, does all the. He did that video of him dancing with um, what's her name, Marina Abramov Abramovich Abramovich. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, the spirit cooker. Yeah. Spirit love cooker. Him. It's yeah. Crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. And yeah. then he, dude. Also, he has just dreads now. Nobody talks about that. Jay Z is like in her fifties. You just grew dreads. Yeah. Like I don't he, know. He's, it's the whole like he's trying to do the the Basquiat thing. I remember it was. I think it was Fifty Cent said he's trying to look like that gay painter, and he couldn't remember his name. It was. A, it was a <laughs> <painter>. <laughs> but I also yeah. think the dreads are fake. Like I think they're just they're mm. just like, pa. Like you just slide on. You think Jay Z's wearing a wig? Yes, he's fifty years old. You don't, I love just, that. You, don't, yeah. you don't just grow dreads when you're I guess fifty. Not. I never thought <laughs> like, of that. Yeah. Only forty can pull that off. The old guy just like, yeah, I'm just gonna try it. Nah, yeah, you know, yeah. They got sick it. stuff now for hair plugs. Like I saw this NBA yeah. player guy that he had like the George Costanza, Jason Alexander haircut, and then they just slid like. Oh, I saw Scott, that video. Scott, it looked good. Like that was, so real? If, that was real. I thought that was a joke. <laughs> no, they, they got the, they, they Brian, put the glue on the hair. Yeah, Ooh, Brian man. Erlacher. Yeah, Brian Erlacher's got hair now. Like there's all these people that Brian have Herlacher, like yeah. it's not like 70s toupee thing. It, yeah. That's not. We're past that point now. Um, it's about time the fellas got something, right? But yeah. the uh, but but anyways, like I was just thinking, like Jay Z's the guy they're trying to go after this whole time because Diddy's like Diddy's got this like, um, insane like everybody knew he was weird, like everybody knew, like for the <laughs> longest time, Chappelle had skits about him go fetch me Cambodian breast milk, you know, like all that. Like everyone knew yeah. he was an odd, an odd person. I do think that he was responsible for Biggie, possibly Tupac's death, um, like both of them. But Biggie, for sure. Like Biggie, without question. I think that's just like an open secret. Um, and then, like, you know, you had the whole Shine incident with uh, where he took uh, basically <clears throat> Shine. There was a nightclub shooting or whatever. Somebody died. And then Shine had to do a pretty considerable amount of time in prison. Now Shine is like the king of Belize or something, <laughs> uh, which is crazy or something. He's He got... Yeah deported 
whatever like you like okay you can you're out of prison but don't come here but i guess his dad was like a factor down there so it's like i feel yeah. like there's like a whole central american thing happening with like mm. like overthrowing of things happening under the diddy thing and we're kind of just laughing about it because it is funny but yeah. it's like the epstein thing felt super nefarious i i wonder when they crossed that line because he's like super entrenched in all of the powerful powerful circles of diddy as well as you know epstein was as well too but just like when when they say okay get him you know yeah. he was it, it wasn't a secret it's an open secret they call it an open secret so when yeah when are they allowed to finally go after these people they're and like whenever the Nick, whenever the nickelodeon documentary comes out diddy yeah. you're a dead man <laughs> I'm just letting you yeah. know like that's what the agent say it's like i can't do anything to stop this are you serious dude um but yeah this this is like epstein directed by tyler perry dude the diddy thing it's crazy this is just it's just amazing the black like the blackmail like uh all, all that i want to see i want to see more of it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah P. Diddy yeah and uh, the, uh, yeah no it, 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 it oh, just yeah. it's i knew it was happening i was like because 50 cent 50 cent is the winner in all this by the way like i for the longest time i remember when 50 cent was like going at everybody the game and stuff and i was kind of like against him but he his arc has been like, upward for like yeah. 20 years now it's crazy floyd mayweather dude when he uh -huh. was like when he was going after floyd mayweather and now it's now he's just like yeah i told you guys they're all gay like that's yeah. like, <laughs> he's like, he's yeah. like I told you, what do you guys what, i've been telling you this forever yeah. like it's like the guy he thought that was just him being yeah. him like okay you call everyone gay you know but it was no yeah he, exactly like, like yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah we're oh, sure good. the game the game was a male stripper and you're like yeah. it was yeah I, um yeah. yeah i know yeah that's that's what's um yeah i know i but one day hey see, see if you can find him in the dominican republic or something see if you could just walk up on him dude just should, have should you seen okay. like meek mill's recent tweets yes yeah, we yeah, talk about that. <laughs> no, no 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 like, no there's there's new stuff oh new uh, the most recent one <laughs> yeah. i saw was like you know i'm focused on gaza and i'm focused on ukraine i'm focused yeah. on Haiti, and and then like just out of nowhere at the end he says i'm not gay dude like, the it's, Chandler, it's the the Chandler jones dude they do the Chandler jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah he does it all he he will not dude he he straight up will do that's when you know okay look no big deal if you are meek oh, i have the tweet i bookmarked it i knew i, I knew i was bookmarking it for something uh y'all choose to watch rap battles and gossip dot 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 he's a big dot 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 guy ellipses guy uh i, I, I like watch I am yeah too. i know I, me too i i, like I, I use it i use it yeah. he's a little bit of overkill but he did pay yeah. for the blue check so you can get more characters it's all good mm -hmm. and then uh he said i watch gaza israel and it's <laughs> just gaza israel as if it's one country and uh yeah. and then haiti being torn apart I, dot 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 i watch the state of people really poor in real life some some think i'm different i think they are clueless to real life but hey who am i y'all do coke and i don't i don't some gay i'm not <laughs> so yeah I mean, that's a great tweet I mean, I, yeah I, if you call him gay he said he wasn't guys i don't know what to tell you so um but yeah it's it's like it is it is rough though it is rough to see like legal documents that you were like oh, damn that's on that's like like there's like senators what looking at that like damn meek you know like uh it's it's tough it's tough we're gonna get you right back to the episode but i just wanted to let you guys know of a few other things we offer at rare candy industries we have a sub stack with free and paid subscription options free subscribers get access to all written content that includes bob's red pill that's the best thing going on the internet right now trust me paid subscribers get full access to our premium episode feed and that's just every episode we don't necessarily want to share with the general public, if you know what I'm saying. Again, that's rarecandy.substack.com. We also have merch. That link's a little long for me to say right now, but go to the description, go to our merch store, and find a shirt that's right for you. We have Rare Candy shirts, Dr. Bronner soap label shirts, Rishi mushroom shirts, all types of stuff there. Check it out. There's got to be something for you. And lastly, check us out on social media. On Instagram, we're Rare Candy Pod, but on Twitter, we're at Rare Candy Pod 1. All right, enough of that. Let's get you back into the episode. So Jeremy, you went back to Israel since the last time we talked to you. I went back to Israel, I, just, just just for the vibes, or like what what happened? Yeah, for the good vibes, I was there for <laughs> yeah, a, yeah. <laughs> for about three weeks. Um, Damn. Yeah. What's it? Okay, yeah. first off, before we get spirit. into what's happening there, the the I bet the food's tight. Oh yeah. Yeah. The food, the food in Israel proper is is not good except for the pizza. The pizza is great for some reason. 
Mm. Now, I don't know what that why this, this is just my experience that pizza is really great and um, all the other food is is not that great. Um, but in like the East Jerusalem and the Palestinian neighborhoods and the Arab neighborhoods, um, the the Arabic food, the the hummus, the pita, um, the kebabs, all that stuff is great. But in Israel, the food is not great other than the pizza. Wow. Yeah. True. That yeah. sucks, yeah. dude. Cause like when you, you get like those sick, like Israeli kind of like cookbooks and stuff, it's like, oh God, that looks so good. Oh man. No, it like, looks good. You know. It looks good. Yeah. But um, also <laughs> another thing, it? the whole the whole country's kosher. So the McDonald's or the like any fast food restaurant, any fast food restaurant at all, um, they don't do there's no such thing as a cheeseburger in Israel. It's just a burger. There's no cheese. Damn, um can't have Jeez, a which is fine i'm not yeah. eating it but like it's it's interesting to see every single burger that anybody eats at any burger place is not a cheeseburger it's just it's just the meat on the bun yeah damn they could have they could have a hebrew national though dude like a hot dog they could there. Like, yeah. like costco they could just costco put big ass, man. Yeah. Big ass go, gosco dude just put big, <laughs> <laughs> just a big, just a big big right in the middle of gaza strip just put a big yeah. ass costco <laughs> uh, food court and everything yeah I, 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 I we, need, like we need like, this land for this we need this yeah you know, this that's, what it was all, that's what it yeah. was all for actually but um yeah the, uh, I, yeah I, mean, I would respect that more than what it is whatever I, this, I, that's know. that yeah. honestly before we get into your trip i I like there's I've seen like kind of some tides turning and like I see a lot more even since the last time we talked you see a lot more people like being a little more outspoken towards Palestine but I just wish people would just admit like why they support what side because like half the time you'll see this guy and he'll have like the Israel flag his last name will be like a very Jewish last name mm -hmm. and he'll be like you know this university like all these accolades and he'll just be like mm, it just feels like Israel's in the right here I don't know <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> dude, why don't you just say, dude, I'm 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 Jewish, dude. I, I'm mm -hmm. I'm rooting yeah. for the Jewish team. Like, yep. you know, like I, I just feel like to me, it's like if I was watching Yankees versus Red Sox, I wouldn't be like, it just feels like the Red Sox have a better minor league system. It's like, no, yeah, I'm yeah. a fan of this team. That's yeah. why yeah. like that that is Good what point. I'm going for. Yeah. But all these people have to do like, I think I have the, you know, it's like there's this weird, like obvious tribalism that happens that cannot be viewed as tribalism. Like no. it just can't. We cannot get it out of the bag, even though everyone sees it. So, uh, but anyways, you're so you're there. Why'd you go back? Why just just again? Like see what see what's back. Uh, like or three weeks is a long time. I went there specifically to I um I got added to and I added myself to a bunch of WhatsApp groups and it was the the um the Israelis who were at the border blocking the humanitarian aid oh, and wow. so I saw how they were organizing. And I thought I could probably just go there and join them for a few weeks and um, kind yeah. of lay low and then interview them once they got to know me and let them be candid with me and um, have them explain what they're doing and what they've done in Gaza because a lot of them are reservists. And so I was there taking a shuttle from Jerusalem through the West Bank to the border of Gaza um, every day with these people, um, eating lunch with them, um, talking to them, just just spending the days with them entirely um for a yeah. few weeks yeah how about that pizza huh you know <laughs> pizza um yeah was so, code, so by the way like oh the pizza is really uh, good that's a good idea that's a yeah, that, good point is that that's what a we're talking very about? good point yeah, yeah. that's a wait, wait, wait say it again was that well, code you know pizza, that, like, you know pizza. i know I, yeah. I i i now that i'm thinking about it it's it yeah. sounds like i should not be saying that yeah if yeah. you go to Israel, <laughs> try the pizza. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Grapefruit like... in my eye. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Over there. That one yeah. particularly. Com they have a comet here, too. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah that, that's what I feel like. No, but, but, um, so, but have you noticed it, though? Like, have you, have you noticed that the, that I think, I don't want to say that the tide's turning because the money still goes where the money goes. Yeah, of course. Happens, but I see way more people speaking out. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I Rogan, think it's just Rogan was big. Yeah, yeah Rogan, Rogan, I saw Rogan. That's yeah, a good point. That's a good mm -hmm. point. Yeah, it's a Rogan thing. And uh, but Ben Shapiro didn't care for that. One I think bit. it's just a matter of, yeah. um, you know, every week there's more footage of you know dead people and bombs going off, and yeah, it's just like a matter of time before more people change their minds and say, you know what, maybe, you know, we're far. You know, October seventh was a long time ago. Um, they're still. You know, dropping two thousand pound bombs on you know homes and schools. You know, I, I think just as time goes on, people will decide it's it's not as justified as they thought um, originally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So exactly, and because again, and right, it's 
it's weird because it's a dog year ago. Like it's October seventh. It's not that long ago, but on internet terms, that's like an election cycle yeah. ago almost. Um, and so th- I think that you know, th- whenever you see the people on the internet, that's like, "Whoa, did you forget about October 7th? I haven't seen you. I checked your tweets from October seventh through October tenth, and I didn't see one tweet condemning Hamas. Like, do people do that now to like remind to mm-hmm. to remind the people that it's like you may think I'm wrong and you may be up to you know up to something here but just know that i know that you're a genocide supporter when it's just kind of these two people pointing at each other saying there's a genocide happening which is like yeah i've seen the i've seen the the highlights that's not fair to say but uh, yeah the sports center yeah no (laughs) but no i've seen the uh i've seen the some of the clips where it's like yeah obviously something bad's happening there but again this has been happening since what the 40s and stuff like this this fight and it's weird to pick a day where you can just start and stop like a war exactly there are people, there are people exactly. at my work not saying i work with road scholars they're road are oad scholars <laughs> and they uh they they will say they they think israel palestine started on october 7th like no joke like i think that's like really been the biggest thing about kind of the thing mm-hmm. happening right now is to introduce to a lot of people who aren't jewish who aren't muslim or anything to be like actually this war just happened it's a different Middle East war that you just found out about on October. 7th. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not. It's not a surprise. Like you, it is true. Like you, you know, in in the forties, you take all of these Arabs and you say, "Hit, we're gonna have a, a Jewish only country here." All all of you guys, all the Palestinians, they have to go into this thing called the Gaza Strip. Um, you know, and then you put them under Caesar and occupation for you know all these years. Of, of course, every now and then you're gonna have, you know. You know, an armed resistance that says, no, we don't we don't like how things are right now. And of course, you know, October 7th, it was very bad. It was very bad. Um, but it it's it's not a surprise. Have you have you seen the I because I, I can't go here yet, but like yeah, yeah. I saw somebody saying somebody from like the Palestine side, mm-hmm. somebody who like really is on the like the the like that's their thing. It's the Palestine thing, and they said they think that some of the footage of October seventh was AI. It's interesting. I've never heard. I've never heard that. I would right. I be surprised? I wouldn't be super yeah. surprised. It's a giant, a giant military militarized government that's super ahead in technology in terms of other countries. Like, yeah, they can make some AI videos. Of course they can. Because I, because I, I saw a video of AI creating hell the other day. Like it was just like <laughs> I love that. I really like that video. I don't know. <laughs> I think about it for everything. All the but arms was, are like, like yeah. all the arms are reaching towards. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it was pretty sick. Pretty I, it was, yeah. I, I kind of liked it, but it was just kind of like, okay, well, I was like, damn, like that's like just the AI we have access to. I'm not saying that looked real, but like it was a pretty, pretty cool, like, you know, at least cinematic look of like hell. And I was like, okay. Are we just going to be dealing with this for like the rest of our lives of like, was that even a real video that like we sent millions of dollars or billions of dollars over for to like strengthen a country? I'm I like, mean, oh. the the video, they apparently the IDF put together a 40 minute video of footage from October 7th, but it's not public. It's by invite only. <laughs> it's paywalled. Yeah, Patreon. Yeah. So it's, it's like we've invited a few journalists from the Wall Street Journal and a journalist from the New York Times and this comedian. <laughs> Um, to come see the video and then these people see the video and then they go and tell you know their influencers they, they go on social media or they go to a stand-up show and they say you know i i saw the video is very bad it's just a little interesting that you know if it's if it's real like why i just don't understand why everyone can't see this video especially if they want public support show this video exactly everyone. exactly like we had to watch i mean we, we've had to watch all sorts of ba- i mean i'm sorry like when the towers hit yeah you had to watch the towers point. like you know you had to i, I know it's a little bit further away it's a building going down you don't see it as much but like i'm sorry dude i if i go on x i can see a beheading video that i don't want to see i'm mm-hmm. not one of those people that cries about content on x but like i i see i see some re- stuff i really mm-hmm. don't want to see i see people dying all the time on x and uh it's very weird that you would just send it to like brett gelman and that's it and just be like yeah. hey did, did you see it and he's like yeah and then then goes and uh uh like i don't i personally wouldn't even click on the video but just the fact that it was made available to me i'd be like all right you yeah know, no like, if, if someone's there. offering you to, then you you believe at least that it's it's kind of real um and, and well, i'm not saying yeah. it's not real it's just interesting that they're not letting anyone see it yeah no that's the thing it's not the people say it's a denier it's like no i i think the october 7 thing happened i mean of it course. did happen but it's also the bigger weird. problem is all this stuff all the numbers all the everything all the takes are just filtered through this weird state apparatus 
mm-hmm. and they've admitted many times before that they want Hamas to do, keep doing what they do because it's easier to control that narrative surrounding Hamas as a terrorist organization. So it's just, it's just super funny, you know. It's just interesting how how this and you know all the like you know the IDW type, the Shapiro's and the Coleman Hughes types who I I like on certain stuff, you know for sure. Um, but they all just take that stuff at face value and give them the hundred percent benefit of the doubt. It's like you guys, you're supposed to be sharp, you know. Like, what's that about? Of course. Yeah. What if, if it's a it's a pro- if it's a proclamation coming from the yeah. Biden administration? Of course, yeah. you know the, this whole group will say he's lying. They're lying. You can't believe a word they say. Yeah. But when it's the Israeli government, they're yeah. like, it's gospel. It's just it's, and, they're both yeah. governments. And Glenn, both, you know what's the difference? Yeah, and Glenn, I think the Coleman Hughes thing is like he's. His, he's cut from the Sam Harris cloth. He, like his whole style, I, and I, I, I like that guy. I'm not like a hater at all. I think he's like reasonable mm, and right. stuff. But his whole thing is like the, he got like his whole cadence and everything and takes from Sam Harris. So that's where that comes from. Is God, the, well, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. like, and it was weird that like you know, I remember like when Candace Owens, uh, you know, I got fired. I don't know what the the whole thing. I think she got fired from the Daily Wire. And part of me was like, oh, that's the the, the whole people would always go to this zone where they would say, or like this realm of thought to go, well, I thought the daily wire was about free speech. I'm like, and then the response is always, well, the daily wire, it's a private company. And, uh, and you, they, they do that. It's like, yeah, first off for me, I didn't even know Candace Owens worked at the daily wire. <laughs> like I really didn't. I thought she just had her own thing. I thought it's like thought, when you I, find like a like a veterans on the Yankees, you're like, damn, is he? Like, yeah. Yeah. He's still in the league. <laughs> no, yeah, I thought, I, and yeah. I, to be honest, yeah. dude, during COVID, she was phenomenal. Like, yeah. a, a, like I thought she was really good on the vaccine. Like she was like, re- talking she's on like, the fifty really, cent arc. Like started kind of. Uh, yeah, she was really weird. good. Really? No, yeah. and, and and like, look, the the whole format of it is still that kind of like, hey, you don't scroll past this video. Like those people, like it's still very like produced and and whatever. But you know, whatever. A lot of like people at my work, people like I, a lot of people I know like love that style of information. And, um, you know, she was making good points about palestine about gaza and all, and all this stuff and, and zionism but at the same time i was like yeah but you you do work for ben shapiro like i was like if i was ben shapiro i'd be like dog like what, what are you doing you know like i hired you you know what i mean like this is like my <laughs> thing you know she was, like she like even even recently i mean first i remember she first um and like i have a soft spot for kanye west I remember she came to Kanye West's defense when oh, he sure. became a, a Trump supporter. I like the um, way Candace and Owens that's when I yeah, first I like <laughs> knew who she was. Uh-huh. Yeah, he <laughs> said that. He said, "I like the way Candace Owens thinks." People freaked out when he posted that on the internet. This was, I mean, this feels. And like I didn't, who, I didn't know who that was before yeah. then. Yeah, mm. she because she got big. At least when I when I first started seeing her, because I'm a sports guy, she got big during Kaepernick, the Kaepernick thing, because oh, she okay. was the person that you know of yeah, yeah, that yeah. uh she was of the of the race uh that that would you wouldn't think would be saying that yeah. big war uh in that and then she kind of went big on the you know for for a lot of things like a lot of like the you know classic conservative thing conservatives like that they had like a black person to kind of you know be be a representative to black it was just it was a big it was a big uh thing for a while but then when like covid hit i think i remember my wife sending me like a video and i was like Yo, not only is she just like saying like this is not what we think it is and mm. stuff like she was getting into real like numbers on like pregnant women and yeah. things like she that. She made like, a whole is- documentary about the HPV vaccine recently. Like she's I know. she's like not like I definitely I definitely rather Candace Owens be around than not be around. Like it's it's really great um, some of the stuff that she's doing. It's just I think hard she had to her family. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was saying, sure, I think okay. she she had her family. She really doubled down on the or her moral compass, you know, like this is all about you know, she, she, you know, some people can just really ratchet away from any mm-hmm. kind of, you know, they just become a media star and they just lose any connection. She's, she's really doubling down on like the, the, the integrity aspect of it, which I really like, you know? No, I, I like definitely um, respect her and it's hard to even, who cares? Like, I mean, I don't know if any, any of it's genuine, but I do believe some of it's genuine um, because it's so yeah. hard. I mean, these people are so, you know, they're famous, they are media personalities. And, you know, she's the one, you know, you wouldn't expect a black person to be against Black Lives Matter. You wouldn't expect someone who worked at the Daily right. to come out um, in support of Palestine. Like it is, she just constantly does this type of thing, but she's, she is correct every time. So it's like, 
what are you going to do? And with yeah. the Daily Wire, there's that guy. What's his name? He does all the trans stuff. Um, Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh said um, – well, Ben Shapiro said in an interview with, uh, I think it was Sam Harris, um, he said, Matt Walsh, um, he believes that we should not be involved in um, what's going on uh, in Israel, Palestine. Um, he said, I support the, you know, the moral superiority of Israel over Hamas, but it is so far away that I just don't think our tax dollars should go there. Um, and Ben Shapiro said, you know, we have people there here who clearly don't want, um, who don't support Israel. Don't think that U.S. should uh, support Israel, and it's fine. But um, so it's like clearly not the whole Israel thing that got Candace fired. But like I've never heard Matt Walsh say that in his life. He definitely <laughs> hasn't made that his whole character. He's always talking about the LGBT, LGBT stuff and the trans stuff. I wonder if he was to start like every day talking about how the U.S. should not be involved if 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 Ben Shapiro would still treat him the same way. Uh, because yeah. Ken, Candace Owens was doing this every single day talking about Israel Palestine. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm to be honest, I don't know where Ben Shapiro's money comes from for like the Daily Wire. I don't. I'm sure he gets some sort of donations. I don't. I can't imagine it's all his money coming in and all and all that. And I'm sure wherever the money's coming from said, "Hey, uh, you guys, you see that lady that talks on your uh, channel sometimes? Mm -hmm. uh, you hear what she's been saying? You know, and 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 that is the problem. Like that is the problem. I, I agree with what Candace Owens is saying." my problem is is like i won't if i if that is truly my stance i will not be employed by somebody who is like a rabid rabidly against what i'm saying because even if they do the agree to disagree when we have the job interview when push comes to shove that they'll they'll just discard you like nothing and i and i truly i think she's a big enough name to where she doesn't need the daily wire in fact yeah. me not knowing that she was at the daily wire all these years or for however long mm -hmm. Let's it be known that like Candace Owens herself is a brand, and I know she. I, I think she's married to a pretty wealthy man. I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think she's she's got a family with like I don't know if he's a billionaire, but he's he's got a lot of money. I'm kind of like, dude, just if you started your own channel, like you wouldn't yeah. have to do any of this stuff. Like you wouldn't have to jump through any of these loopholes. And it's not point. It's not that hard to just put a computer in front of your face and like say the thing. If you already have the odd, the hard part is building the audience, which she already has. The audience. Yeah. For the most part, I think we'll travel with her, except for, you know, the uh, Israel people, but they might have left her a long time ago. And I just I have a hard time with people who work, work for the people who are super tribalist about, you know, topic X, and then you go against them and you're surprised when they do can you. It's That's always what like, makes me so. Yeah confused about whether or not she has always believed this like am i really to believe that she um she's always believed it or that she's you know supporting israel now now she doesn't now she now this is where she draws the line like it, it's just it doesn't make sense that um she was working for the daily wire essentially just like israel propaganda all every time that they talk about the middle east um and and she just didn't care and like where, where did she it just doesn't make yeah. sense it makes no sense, honestly. No, I, I don't know either. It was it was kind of strange because I didn't know that was even her her take on the whole thing. Um, and Me I don't I don't. Yeah, I didn't know when it no, started. But I, 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 I would be surprised if she's ever. I don't think she's ever said anything like. Like being um, anti-Zionist, being pro-Palestinian, like I don't think she's ever said anything like that before in the last few months. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's and she um you know but it's but it's like that with all these people i don't know i i watched just like 10 minutes i i i i'm i don't have anything against tucker really i i, I like him more than i don't but the, his tucker on x is just not hitting for me i, I don't know it's not <laughs> just I, I miss the wood panel studio dude i mean i miss i i just i miss it bad i or we need the old tuck back dude like because this is not this is not it um but anyways like don lemon right don lemon gets fired from elon musk x or some, some weird fake thing happened where i'm like that's <laughs> there's no way that was a real thing that happened but don lemon was like i thought this was the free speech platform and that's that's everyone's debate now now that elon musk owns twitter is oh i thought i had free speech it's just always this this dumb like debate that happens but chris cuomo was on chris cuomo's the cnn guy. yeah chris cuomo was mm -hmm. on uh was on he's got fired from cnn got like me too and, and and all that now he's kind of trying to come out as like a masculine like i'm this masculine hey cuomo like one of those guys 
um because that's really the only direction he can go in at this point but like him and tucker had this completely it was supposed to come off as like boys at the bar like putting aside their differences but he was saying like you were really mean to me, man. And like Tucker was like, yeah, my wife was like, why are you so mean to that guy? And he's like, cause I can't, cause I, cause I, cause, cause I can, cause I'm just a dick. Like, and, and it's just like, do these people believe anything? Like I, I do certainly feel like the NPC brain chip, chip meme is like when you're that, that level of journalism, that level of, of podcast, anything it's like, dude, I, do these people really believe you can't pivot that hard? Like in real time, man, like it's, yeah, it's, he went I, from, Cuomo went from CNN to um, he interviews Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as much as he can, and yeah, no way, truly, yeah, as much as he can, every every few yes. nights. And and Kennedy has said like, oh, shout out to News Nation, thank you so much for having me on this often, the only channel that allows this. And he's sort of um, really quickly actually, Cuomo has kind of become this. Look, I'm the only television journalist interviewing Robert F. Kennedy Jr. because I don't believe in the two party system. Blah blah blah. Um, it's just like. But where else could he have gone? It, 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 you can't be CNN independently. You know, you have to you have to go the you know Robert F. Kennedy Jr. route. And it's yeah. so weird that they look for like a new or organization to join. It's like if I got if I got booted out of CNN, they didn't have my back. He was he was top dog at CNN, like he was top lead anchor. I mean, I, I That's crazy. I know this because of my family watches it. So like he's on there. You know, and then you, what? Your brother's the mayor of New York, just just packing sardine can in the, the nursing homes, just just <laughs> thinning out Social Security, yeah, just thinning it out. Just all right, I I know where, where we could save a little some money here doing that. And then he's top dog at CNN. You have like the ultimate like just Cuomo brotherhood running like the East Coast news cycle, and then both of them go down. And it's like the, the next thing they do is like, I want to join another news program. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, I, they're all the same. I mean, like even uh, even Fox, I, I understand that they don't talk about the same things, but like they all they all have the same kind of like attitude when you go against whatever it is they're trying to push. And it's like I have trouble with a lot of like boomers because they you know, if you watch any even some of the best like 70s movies where like there's a conspiracy and some guy solves it they're like and i'm gonna take it to the new york times after <laughs> yeah. i find it and then the new york times guy's like this is awesome let's print this and then everybody finds out the truth and i'm like they think that's still how this works it's not how this works or I how mean, it I, ever worked yeah. if you remember um this is a long time this was like during the black lives matter riots um the new york times printed um, something that Tom Cotton wrote saying that we should send the military onto the streets to, to secure oh, yeah. the America, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And there was two editors of the New York times that allowed that to go to print. And the New York times fired these people. And Ben Shapiro at the time, he did like emergency streams. He spent days talking about this of how, how <laughs> these two editors, um, they were <laughs> wronged by the liberal media and this and that. It's like, all, whether you're a Daily Wire, whether New York Times, like everyone has these editorial standards, whether we like them or not. And Ben Shapiro just happens to be, you have to be nice to Israel. Like he, yeah. Yeah. he fired Candace Owens for saying the wrong thing about um, Israel. And he criticized New York Times because they fired people who were too right wing. You know, it's just, it's, they're all, they all, they're all the same. Yeah. yeah. Especially the Daily Wire was started by um, some billionaire. I can't remember his name. Gave, gave, um, Gave Ben Shapiro a bunch of money to start it. Oh, I was going. I was wondering how that came to be. It's, it's uh, not really a grassroots yeah, type operation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jeremy Boring, 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 Boring. Oh yeah, he's. I think he's the. He's like in charge of it right now, but I don't think he, he's not the founder or anything. Oh, that's not the founder. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Not I mean, no. He. They might be the founders, but they weren't the people who um, found who, who funded it. Money, founders, but, but not the funders. Funders. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Because. Um, yeah. Anyway. Oh. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I guess whatever. Can't find it. But anyways, the uh, yeah, it's not just Ben Shapiro stumbling into a family fortune and starting his own news company, right? It's it's uh, it's uh, again having boss like the whole time. It's like, why are these people addicted to having bosses? Yeah. Like, his, name's Ferris, his name's Ferris Wilkes. Ferris Wilkes. He gave all. them four point seven billion to start the Daily Wire. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. God, dude. That yeah. is million, million. I'm I'm so sorry, million. Okay, I was gonna say that's. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been crazy. I was, like, yeah. I was like, can I just have 
some of that money. No, yeah. I, see, that's the thing. Then I have to be, you know, the, the it's never with no strings attached. Uh, but yeah, like that, that's that's the craziest part about it, man. It's like they're addicted to having bosses, these people. Like, and I'm, I'm I never believe it. Like when they go truly go rogue, right? Like, look, you, I mean, you don't have a boss, right, Jeremy? Like, you don't actually have, like, a someone you yeah. report to all the time. You might be, someone say, hey, go over here for this mm-hmm. one particular thing and and, and do that. But at the, at the end of the day, like, there is a, uh, yeah, maybe you don't have the job security other people have, but it's, like, it is still, like, you get to cover the thing you want to do. Like, you you went to Israel, right? No, it's not cheap to do that. But, like, you go to, you go to Israel and you go for three weeks and you're actually genuinely trying to find the answer to something, right? Like, you're, you're generally saying, like, okay how are they cutting off aid are they doing this Mm -hmm. Uh, of course yeah no but when i hear it when i did work for when i worked for rebel news Mm -hmm. and i went to russia um i I did a bunch of great things there but i did one thing um where i went to um it was like a orphanage uh, a refugee camp that was funded by the russian government Mm -hmm. and i interviewed a bunch of kids there interviewed some teachers i walked around um and then I came back and I said, you know, we have the, I have this great thing. I spent a day at a refugee camp. And they're like, that's awesome. Can't put it anywhere. That's it's it was funded by the government. I, I the rebel news cannot afford uh, of being accused of being, you know, influenced by Russia or in bed with Russia. Wow. So what, what you did there, I'm sorry you wasted your day, but we're not we're not putting that anywhere. And so, yeah. like, okay, sure, fine. That I guess no one will ever see that. But then I I quit and then um many weeks later that um refugee camp that i was at was accused of by the u.s state department of being um evidence of war crimes saying that these children were um illegally taken from ukraine and these children did not want to be there they were they're against their will and uh, you know making references to nazi germany and i was the only journalist uh western journalist at least that had been to any of these camps and i had this on my hard drive and my boss would didn't let me put it out but i didn't work for them anymore so we I, I called up Ezra Luant, the guy who runs Rebel News. I, right. I paid him some money. I was like, I really, this is now, now it's more newsworthy than it's ever been. And so then I did it with Max. I did it with the grace on them. But it was crazy that having a boss, you could have something so interesting or just like so great. And then just like, just say you can't do that. You can't do that. Um, that's going in the trash. No one's ever going to see that because we pay you and we're the boss. And it's like understandable. That's how it works. They are paying me. But it's exactly. not a great way to write news to to do news. Well, no, exactly. It's like that's that's just a pot. Like the other the other day, I saw this this thing where, I, and I felt bad. Like it's it's everything that I stand for and or and everything that I'm against was this guy in the military refusing a vaccine, mm-hmm. and then they, I mean they they got that vaccine into him. I'm just gonna tell you Dude, that. That much. was crazy. I was like, did you see that video? That video. Was I didn't crazy. know. I, I didn't know if they were. I was like, did they forcibly do it, or were they just trying to get him into a room? No, they did it, dude. It was, but at the end of the dude, day, anybody that joins, you God are damn, dude. okay. I agree, but yeah. you are not you. You are the property of the U.S. government. You join yeah. the military, like I mean, that's I, yeah. that is the trade off. Like I know some people don't know that's what they sign up for, and I'm not shitting on people that join the military. But everybody I know that would go to the military. They would be like, oh yeah, they used to just jam like needles with like brown liquid into me, like it was, like yeah. they like, just like they just like some shit. Like I was going to this country and they would just jam like yeah. syringes into you. It's like you you don't really have a leg to stand on, like um, yeah. in that in that sense. And it's like there are sacrifices that you do have to make. And I hate to say this because it kind of sounds like I'm validating like, oh, you can't be part of society. It's like no, but I mean, is there there are these people that want to cush job that pays x amount of dollars a year covering but but then while also saying the truth it's like no that's it's actually kind of mutually exclusive those are usually the schizo people that are like scrounging up money to like do their next venture like those are the people that actually are allowed to say the truth it is a trade-off a lot of times um you know you might find somebody that agrees with you but even then like are there donors are there you know even the, the political leanings like that could change and you could be asked to cover another current thing that you're not so passionate about. Someone um, like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Like you, you're following his campaign. You're like, this is crazy. This guy is saying everything right. Everything about, you know, yeah, agriculture and chemicals and industrial sure. poisons and pharma and COVID and, and Ukraine. Like it's, it's crazy. He's like, he's getting everything right. And then he, you know, then he teams up with Rabbi Shmuley, and oh. 
He's like, you're like, wait a second, maybe this was the trade-off. Maybe he had to support this one horrible thing in order to support all these great things because it doesn't add up. Um, yeah. Didn't you like, go to the? He, didn't you go to the store? Oh, I went the, to the sex store. Yeah. From the five to the six, we be in the mix without making a pay job on the wheel. I need food for the kids, money for the rent. Yeah, you went to the sex, the, the Shmuley sex. Yeah. Sex so, so Rabbi was Shmuley, just, was it like lit? A, yeah, I mean, you, let me just explain who he is. He's like a super politically connected, like rabbi. I think he's not even a rabbi anymore. Um, he was the spiritual advisor for Oprah and Michael Jackson. Um, and then cool. right when, uh, right when Trump was getting accused of anti Semitism, he appears out of nowhere. He says, Listen, I'm a rabbi, um, Trump loves Jews. And then he kind of like disappeared in the distance. And then Robert F. Kennedy Jr. got accused of being anti-Semitic because he um, explained that um, he he made the Holocaust thing. He, no, he no yeah. he he well he, what he did he was re he was referencing a paper in PubMed that said um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. COVID affects um, Chinese people and Ashkenazi Jews yeah. um, less than it does other people or something. Yeah. Um, and so so he was just. Just sit. I fucking, I fucking love that he said that too. That's a, yeah, no. He's yeah. <laughs> just saying that like it's possible for a virus to affect different yeah. races yeah. differently, which is like it's, we literally have sickle cell anemia. Like it's a course. fact. Like that. Yeah. That's like it's like not even a shock to say that. But it was. But like again, it's it's still racist to say that it was from a lab, not the wet market, which is actually racist. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. But yeah, yeah. But no, the Rabbi Shmuley thing. Hey, dude, I didn't know. I didn't know any of his like lore or history. I thought he was this thing that spawned out of like a Terminator electrical orb on October seventh. Like I didn't see him. No, before. He's he's been around. Yeah. Wow. He's, so Oprah, he got he's with so the big O dog, dude. Oprah and Michael Jackson and um, yeah, uh, Trump and he started. So he came back out of the woodwork when um, when Kennedy was accused of being anti-Semitic to say, listen, Kennedy loves Jews. And they paraded each other around the the country for a little while, and everyone would make fun of him because his his daughter owns a store in Jerusalem called Kosher Sex. Mm. Um, it's uh, it's a sex shop. They have butt plugs and dildos and lube and t-shirts and um, the whole idea is like, look, uh, you can. I don't. I don't understand. Like, are are the are is this dildo kosher? Like, what does that even? Uh, what does that mean? Um, it's a Woody Allen joke. I, no, I'm kidding. But the, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, it's an Annie Hall. You know. But I walked in there and I just like I walked in because I was so curious. I thought it'd be so silly if I <laughs> if she agreed to be interviewed by me. And I I I just thought it'd be an interesting experience. Plus, it was close to my hotel. Yeah, cover I your walk. ass when you walk in there, dude. You know, yeah, but, that's they, what. Might, they might hit you with that star of David plug, dude. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, yeah. just, ah, I got you. Yeah, it's like, I really <laughs> just got to use the bathroom. It's like you got to buy something. I'm no, sorry. No, yeah, sorry. You, you gotta Jeremy's walking. Jeremy's walking in. Like I thought this was a pizza place. Like. <laughs> 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 but, uh, no, that's, dude it's crazy because i remember when you said you did mention the shop last time i i can't remember if you had, had already been there or but not ran into rabbi shmuley himself randomly on the street oh. last time i was in Israel, and he was like what are you doing here and i he was drunk it was like 1 a.m he had popcorn kernels on his shirt but i knew it was him Based. and I've been, I've been there you know fair yeah. enough yeah um i say hello to him and um, I tell him, I said, believe it or not, I, I used to work with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. at Children's Health Defense. He said, really? What's your name? I said, my name is Jeremy Lafredo. He called Robert F. Kennedy Jr. up that second. <laughs> he said, I'm with Jeremy Lafredo. Do you know who this is? And it wasn't on speaker. He apparently said yes. Hangs up the phone. He's talking to me. Um, he says, what are you doing here? I say, I'm, I'm just reporting on the on what's going on. You know, the war. I think I'm going to go to the West Bank tomorrow. He, means, he says, you mean Judea and Samaria? I forgot who I was talking to. It's like with the... The people who don't, who, you know, Judea Samaria is like the biblical name for the West Bank. Yep. Um, so if you're calling it the West Bank, it, it, you're not a Zionist, essentially. Um, so he, yeah. he called me a little bit right there. And I said, he said, really, what do you like for who? I said, uh, it's the gray zone. And the gray zone has written countless oh. articles on Shmuley before. <laughs> so he's yeah. so confused. He's drunk. He knows that I know the presidential candidate who he's becoming famous off of. But yeah. at the same time, I'm there for the gray zone who he hates. 
So he doesn't oh, know shit. how to treat me. He just takes um, out the, the big Max Blumenthal anal beads. He's like, yeah. this, this. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta send Max that clip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, he's got like a dummy with like a gag ball in it. Gray zone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I saw him last time. He was very confused um, by me being there, knowing who um, Bobby Kennedy was. This time, I saw his daughter. I walk in and I say, um, "Oh, I know, I know your father, Robert Shmuley." She doesn't know. Um, I sit down. I speak to her at her desk for a little while. Um, I say, "This is a really great story you have here. Um, you mind? Can I? What, what do you got?" And she gives me a tour. These are the but everything's like you know. 300 shekels which is like you know 80 bucks it's like mm. everything's overpriced um and she invites me to um she invites me to shabbat dinner with her and her family it's not something i go to but she she was nice yeah. but she was also you know um uh, a fanatic about um you know zionism and also kosher sex but i was just being as nice as i could to see if i could get any interesting experiences out of the, the visit so does he just he just has to blitz. so he's a real rabbi like it, like or is that just I think he he was and I think whoever issue you know you whoever makes you a rabbi makes you not a rabbi they they took away his credentials I believe oh so he, well yeah. then, then we have to ask are the toys actually kosher that's a great question yeah. Yeah. his argument is that um we there's a kosher sex shop because sex toys um they uh, the main reason for divorce is that you guys aren't sexually attracted to each other anymore. So one way that maybe we can stop people from getting divorced is giving them sex toys. Damn. That's his, his argument. Yeah. I mean, meet meet the Fockers, the, the yeah. Barbara Streisand <laughs> and like Dustin Hoffman people. I feel like they'd be like up in there. But uh, yeah, th that's, that is crazy. Because I, dude, when I saw Rabbi Shmuel, I, I watched the clip when he was on Alex Jones. Alex, mm -hmm. Alex, oh yeah no the Alex, debate did you watch that alex got his ass dude yeah he, no, I watched he, it as well. because yeah, uh, dude it's so funny because alex sits there with this like when alex jones has that serious like i'm listening face it's <laughs> really funny like it's actually funnier than most of the things he says like because it's just he's sitting there <laughs> locked and you know he's just got a, a butt plug joke just just sitting there <laughs> he's just like he's like it's it's there yeah he's like he's like when when you're done I, i'm gonna hit you with the butt plug joke. <laughs> and then he's like what do you got one in your ass now like that, he's on one right now, like that. And he's like, and then Rabbi Shmuley was talking about. He's like, oh, and you owe those families, uh, four point oh, five million dollars. And he goes, and there was one Jewish boy in Sandy Hook. And I was like, of course, like, they, really there's like, like, like he picks out the one kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, like and he, and he was he was he he was out, out of this world and like alex jones hit the like him like grinding on his daughter at the party like or uh, granddaughter at, the, at the party kind of uh like sex toy stuff like he hit that he had that ready to go it was i, I honestly props for him for even going on there i don't know what like what he had to gain <laughs> to go on there. his I, no his like his whole shtick shmooey and he's written in his book before i can't remember the exact quote but it's it's along the lines of do anything for attention do anything that will get you clicks do anything to further your career as you know a as a famous person so like he'll go on alex jones he'll lose a debate he doesn't care he'll dress up as candace owens even though he looks like an idiot he doesn't care because it's just furthering this everybody wants he just wants everybody to know who he is yeah because dude the money the the anti-semitic thing that he did where he where he like put the money all over himself and it was yes. like blood. i was like that was the first time in a while I, where i was like i think i don't need to use the internet anymore because i looked at <laughs> it like I, I i don't have positive thoughts in my head right now like this is, and this who, is dark who is you know a greater purveyor and manufacturer of anti-semitism if not rabbi shmuley people could go into uh, one of his interviews totally unaware of how, how they feel about Israel and Jewish people and leave saying like, oh, wow, if that's Israel supporters, if that's Jewish people, I don't like them. Like, I mean, it's not just Shmuley. It's Shmuley and, and the Israeli military right now. I mean, when they say um, anti-Semitism is on the rise, it's like, yeah, because you have a military planting, you know, menorahs in the middle of neighborhoods that they blew up trying to connect you know, the Israeli government with um, Judaism right now is a horrible way, is a great way to manufacture anti-Semitism. Yeah, no, it's true. And I can't, I can't shake the, the Oprah connection. 
The Oprah connection is weird, dude. Because you, you have like you have Marianne Williamson, all right? Mm-hmm. Oprah, she's an Oprah person. You got Rabbi Shmuley. I mean, like, oh, I mean, look, it's it's she's. I don't know if she might be a little more behind the scenes now, but like when I was a kid, she was she was top dog. There was nobody there was nobody bigger on TV than Oprah. Like, she and was, that's when they were together. Wow, because dude, yeah, like I mean, I, like yeah. the late nineties interesting yeah marianne was there during that time too yeah that's that's insane like because now it's like you have look I, was she ever a serious political candidate no but she always she's always there to get people in for biden when it's when it when, mm-hmm, when of all course. that stuff is when yeah, all she's that useful stuff is like that she's very useful yeah. um and then uh and then rabbi shmuley is there to to keep to keep israel uh at, at the very least he can be the like under he could be like the true controlled kind of like caricature i guess is the way i would put it like like truly the the guy to maybe bait some people into like saying some weird stuff onto the internet that then gets like put as like you know hate speech or something because it's like at the end of the day it's like i don't have that hate in my heart but like when i saw him wearing the dollar signs i'm just like okay yeah, what, am I, what am i supposed to do here he's like baiting I, people into anti-semitism like exactly. he is he truly is like there he can say anti-semitism is on the rise jews are you know you know jews in america are not safe but a giant purveyor of anti-semitism is people like that who are so incredibly yeah. um proudly zionist and they're willing to you know um justify any war crime by israel because it's a jewish state it's like peop- that's not a way to get people to like jewish people that's a, a way to people to, to turn them off from uh judaism and zionism yeah, no, I, I I completely agree. And now, um, speaking of, you brought up RFK earlier. Uh, yeah. What do you think of the vice president selection? Mm. Um, I don't have. I mean, in in the very beginning, I, I mean, it's, it's still right now. I only have like a surface level understanding of who she is. I understand that she's, you know, a very connected, you know, democratic operative and lawyer. Um, the ex wife of like the Sergey Brin. Yeah, Google CEO. Like that's that. Th- those two things. Like that's. Those are two horrible things. Um, I met, but I met, I met that dude before, by the way, Sergey Brin. I used to, I used to. Oh, in, at, in California. Yeah, I used to temp at Google, dude. So I was on campus trying to like scrounge up some lunch, and I seen that dude. That dude, I, it was like a almost an impressive how like dark and like powerful he was. Like I was like, whoa, it was it was it was, it was a, <laughs> a dark aura that dude had when I when I saw him. He was just he was just kicking back, like he was just kicking back, and I was like. You when you worked there, he would be in all the like promotional videos and stuff, like to mm-hmm. when you would like get your temp agency like hiring thing. And then I and then I I, I ran into him and like I just said hi. I was like, uh, and he goes, hey, like that, and, and like <laughs> and walked away. I was just like, so you knew who it was when you said hello? Yeah, yeah, because because yeah. I was freshly hired. Um, so like he was all in like the thing, and like there were people like crowding around him. It was like a thing, mm-hmm. you know. He doesn't. He wasn't just walking around the campus all the time. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't like steve jobs you know where you'd be all in like apple and stuff and like you after a while you'd get used to him so but um anyways yeah she is she there was always like this rumor that she was messing around with elon so really kind of, yeah oh yeah the, um, one of the things that was rumored to i think believe that i think tank her marriage was the whether it's true or not i'm not sure but i mean hey e- elon gets active dude i mean he i mean why he, he does he, he he gets down so like you never know and then now it's rfk and I don't know. I again, I don't view him as like a viable political candidate, even though I largely like a lot of the stuff minus uh, <laughs> some of the yeah, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it's interesting yeah. how often like he's he's getting invited on CNN mm-hmm. every few days to um, talk horribly about the two party system. It's just really interesting. Like never in my life have I ever seen somebody talk like that on CNN. It's interesting that they're inviting him on weekly. To say how bad the Democrats and Republicans are and how similar they are to one another. It's like that's a type of language and argument that I've never heard on CNN. Yeah. yeah. And it's just weird that it's allowed. It's strange. Do you think he's gonna sheepdog? Because he's gonna drop out, I, I think, like eventually. Do you think he's gonna sheepdog people to Biden? I, I really just I really just I, don't want to go through that anymore. I don't I don't think he's gonna shoot dog to Biden. I just don't see that happening. I don't think he's like um just someone else like like a Bernie Sanders or like a um, like a Pete Buttigieg. It's like he is a Kennedy. So I yeah. don't think that he is like, oh, I better say vote for Biden or the, the, the you know, the Democratic Party won't like me anymore. Like they yeah. already don't like him. He's already anti-vaxxer. You know, it's I don't yeah. I don't see why he would have to do that. Yeah, because I was I was worried about for a long time 
when I'd start to see these articles come out where it's like, hey, it turns out the vaccine is not safe. It might not be effective, you know, and uh, might not be good for pregnant women. Might, all these things that would have got you banned, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows these, like all these things that, that pop up now. I was kind of wondering for a while um, whether you believe Trump is the guy or shouldn't be the guy. It's quite clear that he is the starter conversation starter and stopper for every political voter either people love him or people oh, believe that people believe he there's people that view him as like the biggest traitor in the history of the united states which is hilarious by the way <laughs> it's just like are you kidding me and yeah. uh then uh but then regardless he he's that guy but the with the with the vax i i thought for a while they were going to because there have been a reasonable amount of adverse events um uh it's you don't really see people shilling for it much anymore. Like the, the actual, like how effective it was, uh, unless they're one of those fake Twitter doctors that we covered yeah, sure. a few talks back. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, I was like, are they going to just put the vaccine? Are they just going to actually get Trump on warp speed? I was wondering if CNN was actually going to do that. I mean, it might, I think their pharma money might still be too big for them. To yeah. That'd be a huge. It. Yeah. You mean, you mean, I would wonder, CNN ever say, Trump was in charge of that horrible vaccine program. If you got hurt by so so, all yeah. right, I'm uh, uh, CNN. I don't even know who works there anymore, but I'm CNN anchor and Jake I'm, Tapper. Uh, yeah, Tapper. Tapper tonight he goes. He goes. You know, for years we we were talking about vaccines. I remember in school they gave it to me, and uh, when we we took it for polio, and uh, it helped us out. That was when we had a good functioning system. From 2016 to 2020, we lived under a dictatorship, and we took a vaccine under that. And for anybody who got hurt da, 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 and like you can you can really carve out that window of like bad pharmaceuticals and just kind of be like, now we're back with Biden. We'll get the good ones. We'll get all these. It's not it's not to make America anti-vax, but for someone to be like. You think it'll come full circle with like Kamala was like, I'm not taking a Trump, Trump rushed it. Trump yeah. rushed it. Trump didn't yeah. Trump didn't respond. You can see the narrative. I can see people like uploading this into their brains. These viewers saying Trump. uh Trump, Trump didn't shut the country down when he was supposed to. Trump didn't, um, you know, he do made this a horrible vaccine. He made a horrible vaccine. He rushed it. Um, he and he does love it. I mean, he does talk about how he loves it. And uh, and it got, you know, we it was rolled out. It was rolled out. They could even do some apartheid kind of things. It was rolled out to, you know, here this neighborhood first or this demographic first. And they could really just do that. I think for one, not only because I do think this is one of the worst vaccines to ever come out um like truly like it's it's even though we just covered a massive uh one that came out this was this was unprecedented with the fear model that was behind it and the no, uh, like by far the 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 most wild propaganda machine behind right. a, a pharmaceutical ever in history agreed so so you had that yeah that that i agree and i just i just wonder if you're able to want to just kind of launder that onto trump like kind of just launder that and just be like look we were good with Obama under that. We were, we were good, even though there was the swine flu shit that happened under Obama that nobody remembers. Um, uh, it, you know, the the vaccine that was blinding nurses and, and things like that. But people just don't pay attention to that. The, the COVID thing was everybody paid attention to that. You had to. It affected every single person. And it's very easy, I think, for all the average CNN or MSNBC voters to just say, well, that was the vaccine under Trump. You could you could pull up the Kamala Harris. I'm not taking a vaccine made by Donald Trump. You could even you could make an ad out of that. Like it's just, I don't I know if they're going to go there. In, I think they're in way too deep. Yeah. for years. And yeah, years to do it. I, I I wouldn't be surprised. I I think they're just going to not like why bring up the horrible vaccine when you don't have to. It's true. Which is why which is why the the Trump thing. I mean, I, I what's his political strategy with hyping the vaccine? It doesn't. I know. No one no one that took it is going to be like yeah. Yeah, Trump, and no one that didn't take it is gonna, be, you know, it's I, like I don't know, I don't know. I, it's like I've, I, just from a pure political advisor standpoint, I'd be like, bro, like just don't, just yeah, just stop saying that. I <laughs> wish he wouldn't bring it up at all. He it really know, just dude. shouldn't talk <laughs> yeah. about it. Like, uh, and I've, and, I've yeah. seen some of the most recent like times where he's speaking, and like, so he's like, it seems like he's trying to, um, you know, talk to the same demographic of people who believe the vaccine's bad, but, you know, going to the other, the other things like that. He recently said, you know, central bank, digital currency, I will never implement a central bank, digital currency. So like, he's, he's like that. And that type of political rhetoric will resonate with people who hate the vaccine, but he won't talk about the vaccine. We'll just talk about other things like, like a CBDC 
Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah. You know kind of digital IDs. Uh, all yeah, this yeah stuff exactly. All the stuff that uh, those people also hate, but do not talk about the vaccine. Yeah. 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 Exactly. He's so sick if he brought back the gold standard because he has got like the gold Trump Tower, the gold toilet. He's like the gold ass dude. That'd be the coolest like, thing in the world. I know. That would, and, that would end, I mean, he'd get murdered instantly, you know, of course. Yeah, no, that, that's the thing, dude. I yeah. saw, I, thought, I forget who it was. I think it was Jeffrey Tucker, who's like, who, who's like a like anti lockdown poster. Like he's, he's somebody I've followed for a while. Um, He posted like this really, this time. I, I wish I still had it bookmarked, but it was Trump literally one day. It was like, hmm maybe april or like right right when the like the the kind of big like national emergency of COVID happened in 2020 so like late let's just say late march mm -hmm. one day he was like we're not shutting the country down he was on twitter uh, uh we're not shutting the country down we're not doing this like we're gonna get through this as americans like you need to you know he was even saying stuff about like sunlight all this kind of stuff that you need to get to get through this be healthy literally the next day He's like, this is in our best interest to sit down and wait. And then like, there's a vaccine coming and all this stuff. So it's like there clearly was a conversation that was yeah. had. What like happened? there was, I mean, the many such cases tweet, all that stuff. Like he he was, yeah. in my opinion, I think he was actually leaning towards like the the <laughs> side that I wanted him to be for a long time. But sure. it's pretty tough. Like, especially I mean, he might have been the easiest president to get rid of, too, as far as like uh if you didn't say yes. I mean, there's there would have been half the country that would have celebrated it. Well, I don't know how you can, and this is not a critique of him. This is more just an example of how crazy <laughs> this scenario is. It's crazy that you could be a, a president and not start a new war, but you're still forced to recommend like a vaccine and lockdowns. It's, that's like, there, yeah, that's crazy. That's like, it, it's like, okay, we're, you know, it's like, obviously the powers that be didn't wanted him in every fucking war and like all that stuff. But it's crazy, like how powerful it we we're even we are underestimating how powerful these guys are this crazy right parties, you know yeah, yeah. They, like the powers that be were like oh you're not starting a new war really like the whole military industrial complex they really wanted to war. they they really haven't ever experienced not having war for us but yeah fine that's fine just just please please like recognize yeah. vaccine <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i know i i yeah. you, you wonder and it's like you know, for me, it's it, it, look. It's an election year. I can't wait till it's over. Honestly, I just can't. I just yeah. can't wait. Um, I don't want Biden to win uh, at all. Like I, it, it's just this is this is really bad. Um, <laughs> but like like really bad right now. Like just I, it's I don't know. Like I know there's it's weird. It does. I feel like I'm in one of the I, the reason I want it to end is because I feel like no matter what I say, there's always somebody that's like, oh, you're even participating in the two party system. It's like, dude, I yeah. yeah end of the day it's not gonna affect the way i live my life i hope um but uh, for a while it's like i can't sit there and be like oh trump's perfect either like but i like him more than biden so i mean it's just is what it is like i like i like him more and even uh, po I, even policy wise like let's yeah. just say they have the same policies and it's not true but let's just say they do mm -hmm. one of them is much 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 more fun to watch on the television 100 percent and it's, know, and that's yeah. like truly like that's all it is you can't be and like well biden's a better speaker it's like you can't say that like they, 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 like you literally can't yeah. say that yeah so it's it's yeah dude right. and the crate i mean there's shit like tpp and and just all these things you're like huh that's interesting he didn't go down you know it's like mm -hmm. it's like damn that's crazy and then and even with the israel listen, thing if he does get elected again and he doesn't start any new wars that's the goat right there i'm sorry dude that's of like our lifetime of Seriously. our lifetime it's not even up to, it's, it's, it's not it's crazy. like of my lifetime yeah. i've lived under no wars. Uh, I, was, I was born in yeah. 90 so i have to say at least clinton was a, i can't say hw bush but it still wouldn't matter either way uh clinton right bush a, w bush you have the iraq war you have all all these crazy things and then you have you know obama and then you have trump it's like it's not a tough cat it's not a tough thing to say like that he was the best of my lifetime like it's not it's just not now it's it's again it, there is i think there's just so many so many limitations as president that you have oh, yeah. even though you are you know, if you there, there's the like rex tillerson you remember he was like the sure. he was his first secretary of state um he wrote a book and he essentially said um you know there, during the meetings with trump and netanyahu um Trump would come back to the White House and say, you know what? I think it's actually, I don't know if Netanyahu really wants peace. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. And I, or, I, or I think he's really, I think I, he's trying I to play know. me. Yeah. I think he's trying yeah. to play me. I don't believe him. I think he's trying to lie to me. I think he thinks I'm stupid. So like he was, it's interesting to see that little, a little peek into the White House of yeah. Trump saying, um, I think that guy over in Israel is lying to me. I, I think, and, and <laughs> I mean, but no matter what he wanted to do, like, um, obviously the powers that be didn't allow him or convinced him yeah. to do otherwise in, in terms of, you know, um, 
going about Israel a different way than he did. But it's just interesting to know that in his head, yeah. he was kind of like aware that something sour was going on over there. Yeah, he's got the business acu acumen. Yeah. You know, it's that that's part of it. He's like, oh, this guy's a shyster. You know, mm -hmm. it's, I don't know. It's interesting. Well, it's, it's weird. Thing. Like, yeah, I, I, no, I mean, I like I, this is not the same guy at all. But there's two people that I get reminded of when I see Trump. And it's like Nixon is one of them. Right. I mean, down to the Watergate thing. Nixon was like Nixon was probably the smartest president that we've ever had to his own detriment. Like he was smart enough to be so paranoid, basically, and uh, and trust the wrong people. But like Nixon was dude, like classically trained pianist. Um, <laughs> like, right. no, he, dude, he was, yeah. at, dude, there's just videos of him in like, like, no, at, like his daughter's wedding, just like getting down, like, just like playing like insane, like, uh, numbers and stuff. And then, uh, you know, he, I think he spoke like a bunch of languages and stuff. He was just like, a, a, but if you ask the average, like boomer now about Nixon, who's like a Democrat, they're like, oh, he was a, just a lying crook moron, you know? Yeah. And it's like, um, and then like, also like you go back, I'm listening to the, uh, to the, um, commentaries of caesar right now and i'm like this is totally what trump would do <laughs> like it's just, it's just this like but at the end of the day like everybody all the romans after a while they're like yeah but this shit is sick dude like they're like this is like they had like plumbing dude like in yeah. bc like or, i mean I, I mean is it what we have no mm -hmm. but it's like at the time like dude, jesus isn't around yet and you're like oh we like there's water flowing like there's like these recycling of water and like you know all these like crazy systems that happen and he was just like one of those dudes that would just go around and just make deals. And by deals, it was like, let me have some of this. And they're like, no, I've heard of you. I've heard of you, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm not falling for your shit, dude. This is <laughs> we're German. We're Germanic. We don't do that. And yeah. then he's just like, all right, I'm going to slaughter everybody. You yeah. know, like it was just like one of like it seemed Part like, you know, a lot of this was his a lot. of, And again, we're, we're talking about a different form of warfare and stuff. But I just was like, these, these are one of the these are those people like that. I don't even think we could have that type of person now. Like you do need to just be a talking head that goes on Jimmy Fallon. That's able to optically just go on like Jimmy Fallon and like listen to Questlove and yeah, then be, yeah. and then like eat an ice cream cone and then just smash the pharma button, smash the Israel button, smash all the, but the eat the climate change button. Mm. Uh, and then be able to, whenever there's a current thing to pay, to install panic and allegiance in the, in the paper. That's like what we ask for all these people. Like we don't have leaders anymore. Like, that's kind of what I mean. Like, we we just have people. I mean, right now they're throwing it in our face because it's just two old guys. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know? it, it's the it sounds silly, but the, the, the deep state is a real thing. Um, yeah. And they all smash the same buttons because of the same people who are asking them to smash the buttons every year. I know. Um, and it's tough. It's tough, dude. It's tough to, like, just tell people that because there are people who are just like, yeah, but I, I want this guy to win. And, you know, I don't want to discourage people from – voting if they want to vote i mean look go ahead whatever do your thing like but for the most part i'm kind of like dude uh, there's just just know what can change if you like do, uh, there's people that vote like on like a half court shot kind of situation yeah where they're like well if i vote for this guy this 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 and this and, and it's like no nah, it's just there's just certain things that just that that just aren't going to change and it's and it's yeah. like the israel thing like when you see that you know 60% of Republicans and 80% of Democrats are against um, more military support for Israel. And then the following weeks, you see Congress pass a bunch of military support packages. It's like, mm -hmm. these are your representatives. They are like blatantly, blatantly not representing you. Like it's some things are just not, you know, like it's just not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. You, you have like, uh, you know, I, again, bringing up my coworkers, I always like to do litmus tests, like how much do they hear about? I'm I'm plugged in. So like I yeah. hear more stuff than they do. For the most part there, when they're talking about Israel versus Palestine, nobody's taking sides. They're just there going yeah. like, God, I hope we don't get involved. I, well, mm -hmm. I, we are involved, but I just mean like we hope yeah. that it doesn't become America sends, you know, Iraq war levels of troops over there and 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 really starts, you know really start scorching everything over there and um like that's kind of their biggest thing and i'm like that is that's such a strange thing when you think about like the 40s or like the 30s where it was like no go get hitler you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah. That, that was kind of like go get hitler like take care of japan i mean whether you agree with that or not like there are people like it was kind of the overwhelming sentiment of the country and like you look around and it's like yeah that's because like that's because shit sucks right now like and that's, like that's we, why lockdowns were so crazy yeah because like you'll like you have a bunch of people who are so, I mean, and it's a genocide. It's horrible what's happening in Palestine. You have so many people and I mean, Ru Russia, Ukraine, anything in the border. Um, 
like you have so many people that are so worried about things that probably will never affect like their immediate family, but yeah. like they're forgetting like the the government still has the power to unilaterally shut down the entire country for as long as they want. It's like it's what yeah. is more what is like what will affect your life more than that? And, just, and, yeah, and the and the like the tech infrastructure. That's the scary part. Because like, dude, like back to the Caesar times, like we couldn't have the problem is now, and like this is gonna sound super like stoner, stream of conscious. I don't mm -hmm. care. That's what the show is. So like the but you think about like, okay, there's always can we have the American Caesar? Can we do we want the American Caesar? There's all these like fun debates you can get into with it. But at the end of the day, like Caesar never had to compete with a smartphone. Like he never did. People now, like, it's so scary. Even for somebody like me, I can not leave my house for three days if I have to. In fact, I have. Like, it's just, it just is what it is. Like, I mean, yeah, I'll go for a walk and stuff like that. But, like, you could, if you had three straight days off of work, didn't have anything to go do that, or if you work at home now, it's really hard. Like, I think the, the, that tech right now is Caesar, like, the, the, the big, like, big tech. Cause I don't, these inventions make things easier for a lot of people. It's just the thing. It's things we don't need to be easier. Yeah. Um, and that is like my thing right now is like, you're right now we're, we are ruled by tech. Like I do actually, you know, agree big time with a lot of the stuff that Whitney Webb is talking about. Cause a lot of times, a lot of this stuff is just like tech, like tech wars right now is like what we're into. Um, and you know, there's people that, you know, I've heard people talking about Christian, you know, Christianity the other day on the timeline. And they were like, well, the Iraq war was fought like on some religious stuff. It was like Christians versus Muslims. It's like, no, nah, that was that was not what it was for. <laughs> like, that, like, you know, like we haven't fought those. We haven't really fought that kind of war in a while. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everything just is. And perhaps we never did. Perhaps it was always resources that we were fighting over. But right now it just feels extra weird because it feels like the biggest war is just like it's being fought against us more so yeah. than anything and it's really tough for me to you know i love the conversations we have i love just just checking in about like israel and palestine but for the most part i'm just like dude gas is like 550 a gallon over here dude dude and it, cost me, it just cost me 100 bucks to fill up my tank <laughs> exactly like, like it, and it's sad and it's like you yeah. don't make a hundred dollars an hour you know what i mean like like that's that's yeah. just the thing right now like it's and it's, none, it's and like, none of the candidates that we're getting to choose from are explicitly explaining how I'll how I'm gonna fix that. Yeah. You know, they'll give you some, you know, they'll they'll mention no. it here and there because they want your vote, but they're not actually no one's actually going to make gas cheaper. No one's actually yeah. gonna make your grocery store runs cheaper. Um, which is like and that's what all of the representative, all of the constituents of every representative wants in their life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, look, just the other day, dude, I was it was very dystopian. This happens a lot in the Bay Area because we have like access to like the 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 tech like the the big tech that happens out here like it, you see it more before anybody else did but i saw these things kind of flopped but i saw like the apple vision somebody walking around with apple vision i saw outside, outside. yeah in the wild yeah, um, i've never seen yeah it. uh huh I was, oh, it's only been once mm -hmm. but uh so i don't think it's gonna i i think that product is a flop uh steve jobs would never i'll just say that much and then uh the, but then a cyber truck drove by <laughs> um which i actually do see a lot of those out here and then um and then all of a sudden like i just saw some like guy just like straight up incapacitated pants at his ankles it wasn't sigh but it was just like nope. these people yeah, like this, this guy's just, like screaming yep. out in the street like just like i was like this isn't anything political i'm not trying to propose any political ideology here i'm just like it is strange that i saw all of those things in a matter of yeah it's very freaking weird. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like that's a that's just all i can say it's like it's tough man like it's it's tough you do it, they make it really good i listened to a, a communist uh talk about this once like a like a communist guy who i don't really agree with but he was talking about he goes and there's problems with what he says here he's like he goes hey if china fucks up i know who to be mad at <laughs> What? you know what i mean which i'm like okay then what but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways you know whatever yeah. he didn't have an answer for that uh yeah. but uh i was just like all right whatever but I, i'm like i don't even know who to be mad at half the time here i'm yeah. like who am i mad at am i mad at gavin newsom yeah is gavin newsom the only thing that's bad about this state no like yeah. is, is, if yeah. it wasn't gavin newsom it would it would be exactly. somebody else it's yeah. tough. It's tough not to. It's tough not to want to log off and grill, man. It's yeah. tough not to want to do that. And I do. I do uh, urge people to at least do that a little bit in your life. Um, being there is no reward from being 
completely plugged into the matrix all the time to get the most information there is no reward for that so um you know they're <laughs> uh it's tough you should care but you should also be able to uh one foot in one foot out i've always wanted to uh uh, be that way even though i'm sometimes i'm two feet in sometimes i'm two feet out so um well yeah anyways jeremy uh, uh as always uh thanks for checking in with us you are i don't really like a lot of journalists dude um, and i don't either I, I, yeah because <laughs> it's dude it's so strange like we were talking about it earlier like it's just like they can pivot they can just like you know, they can just, and it's not even like an organic pivot where you're like, oh, all right, I disagree with you there. All right. It's always just like, no, they're like rabid about this thing. People you said know? that I did a pivot because I worked for Rebel News. They're very Zionist. And then I um, worked for a, a lot of like a gray zone. But it's like, no, I only worked for Rebel News because of like the lockdowns and the vaccine. And then I left when that was, yeah. you know, coming to an end. Rebel um, News did awesome work with the trucking. Process. Of course they did. I'll, yeah, I'll never, I'll never forget. That. I mean, yeah, yeah. like, like yeah, that is it. that is what it is. Like, it's just again. But some people that are anti-vax are Zionists. Like, but there are some some journalists where it was. It's just like they'll they'll pivot so hard, and you know that it was like it's either being fed down from an employer, but also like they're they are these people that think they are the the czars of truth. Like they take that job to be the czar of truth, you know, and, and it's and you can tell they're they're just lying through their teeth or or are so such a blank canvas that they don't that they can just be painted on and just be like, oh, this is what you are now, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm like, but at least I like with you, I know, you know, like I know like you're going to say what you've, you know. You're gonna at least try to find the answer to something, you know, or and even if the answer is not great, even if it's like, yeah, there's not much we can do, it's still the answer. <laughs> nice hey, you know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's still the answer. So, um, what do you got going on? What's I mean, I, I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure Gaza's not gonna cool down for a while, but uh, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, I spent some time in the uh, Armenian Christian quarter of Jerusalem, and mm. um, Israel and Jewish settlers have been trying to, um essentially steal the Armenian quarter from the Christians there. Um, Is that and they've right? They've been destroying things. They've been showing up with guns and attack dogs and bulldozers. And so tomorrow I'm going to publish a report that I um, – put together when i was i was there for a handful of days well yeah. i mean i hope everybody's uh on the on the lookout for that uh where where can everybody find your stuff i mean i know i know to follow you on twitter at lafredo yeah jeremy. The twitter lafredo jeremy and then all of the um, video reports from gaza and israel will be on the, the gray zone youtube the gz yeah we're overdue GZ. for another Ma max b episode hopefully hopefully uh he doesn't mind the rabbi from the sex jokes he probably likes it yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh yeah it's uh um, on that note, guys, uh, everyone have a safe week. We'll catch you guys next. Thank you. Peace.